folks, welcome to today's episode of Differential Equations. Our job today, if you choose to accept it, is to find the differential equation that gives us the total change in the salt concentration of a system. So we have a 100 gallon tank of water and there's some salt sprinkled throughout this water. We want to find the differential equation that gives us the change in the salt of the system because there's some incoming salt through a pipe and there's some outgoing mixture of the system going out draining through the pipe. Let's go ahead and solve today's episode of differential equations. Hello folks, welcome to the next differential equation. Today we're going to deal with an application of differential equation. I'm sure the refund that came out of the elevator already told you. Here's the problem we have for today. At time t equals zero, a water tank has this much salt, this many pounds of salt, Q naught. This salt is dissolved in a 100 gallon tank of water. Now, we also are told that one fourth pounds of salt per gallon flows into our water tank at a rate of r gallons per minute. And simultaneously, simultaneously, there is a mixture. The mixture itself of water and salt is being pumped out, gassed out the other side of our water tank at the same rate. Question is, how can we create a differential equation to model the situation? And even better, find the total concentration of salt in this water tank. Let's do it. First thing you want to do is draw a picture. And that's what I'm going to start with. So here is our water tank, for instance. It's got some stuff coming in, some stuff going out. The stuff coming in is that salt, right? That salt with a concentration of one fourth, what? Pounds of salt per gallon. So I'm going to write pounds per gallon. And the rate, the, the speed at which this is coming in is r gallons per minute. That's the rate, r gallons per minute. And so now, if I want to find the total, right, all I have to do is multiply these two. Multiply one fourth pounds per gallon by r gallons per minute. And that's going to give me gallons, gallons cancel out. I'm left with r over four pounds per minute of salt entering my system. Now what's exiting my system here? What's exiting this 100 gallon tank of water? Well, it's the water salt mixture itself. And it's leaving at the same rate, right? We're told it's draining at the same rate. And what is that rate? That rate is R gallons per minute. And so what is the concentration of the outgoing gas? With the outgoing liquid? Well, first of all, the denominator, we know, is going to stay 100. Why is that? Well, the water tank starts at 100 gallons, and you're pumping in as much as you're pumping out, right? So there is no net change in the volume of the system, hence the denominator being 100. The numerator is going to be the salt concentration we start with, right? And that makes sense, right? Compare 1 over 4 to Q0 over 100, right? Here's our total volume, here's our salt concentration. And now we're gonna put the units, which is gonna be pounds per gallon. And once again, if I multiply this by my rate, which is R gallons per minute, then gallons and gallons cancels out. I'm left with Q naught R over 100 pounds per minute. Okay, seems like we're ready for a differential equation. And so now I can take my purple marker and I can write that dq dt where q is the total amount of salt and thus dq dt is how that salt concentration changes in my mixture is going to be what's coming in minus what's going out. All right. So how can we find what Q is in this differential equation? Well, like any time we're faced with, uh, with the unknown, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by some co 
some integrating factor mu of t and so I'm going to have mu of t dq dt bringing this to the other side I'm going to have plus mu of t well let me write this one first q not r over 100 times mu of t is equal to none other than r over 4 times mu of t and so now if you look at this you should recognize that this is no less or no more than the product rule right recall that if i have the derivative of some integrating factor mu of t times q the product rule tells us this should be what this should be the derivative of mu with respect to t times q plus the derivative the derivative of q with respect to t times mu right and if you look at this you should notice one of the terms is already the same mu of t times dq dt looks a lot like this in fact they're identical and so all we have to do is make sure that this guy here is the same as this over here everything except q naught and so how can we do that well we can simply write let me take my orange marker we can simply write that mu that the derivative of whatever our magical integrating factor is must be equal must be equal to its to itself times r over 100 now ladies and gentlemen having seen a bunch of these differential equations can you guess what our integrating factor is i want to give you five seconds or more if you pause the video five four three two one our integrating factor is none other than e to the t but wait if I differentiate e to the t, I'll get e to the t back. I won't get r over 100, so I'm going to have to multiply this by r over 100. So that when I differentiate e to the t times r over 100, I'll get this back. So, let's go ahead and do this. How am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to plug back my integrating factor over here. And so, on the left-hand side, let's demarcate our our workspace on the left hand side I'm going to have d dt of mu of t which is e to the r over a hundred t times q is equal to what well it's equal to r over 4 times mu of t so r over 4 times e to the r over a hundred t all right so now comes the magic integrate both sides with respect to t and so this and this cancels out the integral of this differential is going to spit back out what we have inside here and on the right hand side don't forget your plus c folks right hand side we can take out this constant r over 4 and we integrate this that's going to give us flip that exponent and put in e to the r over 100 t and don't forget the plus c and so r and r cancel out 4 goes into 125 times so what are we left with i'm going to come let me see if there's any other colors i can use unfortunately no let's shift over to this side so I'm going to be left over with what? E to the, let's write it this way. I'll have E to the R over 100 T. E to the R over 100 T times Q, which is what we want to solve for, is equal to 25 times E to the R over 100 T plus C. And so divide both sides by e to the 100 e to this so i will be left with 25 over r e to the r over 100 
t plus c all over e to the r over 100 t and now I can if I want simplify this even further and where is the space let's let's make some space for our final answer here so now I can rewrite this simplify it to my final answer which will be these two guys cancel out for this term at least 25 plus C times E to the minus R over 100 T and that folks ladies and gentlemen is the solution for this differential equation thank you for watching this episode sponsored by brilliant.org Ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding equals learning. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a fraud. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. The first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love with math and science. science.